Hey guys, Victor here, coming at you again with another deck profile. And for today's video, we're going to be doing an updated Light Swarm Bestial deck. Uh, but before we actually get into the deck profile itself, I just want to briefly point out that unlike the previous iterations that I've showcased on this channel, this deck is not going to be using the Horus engine just because I really don't think it's all that needed, to be honest. Uh, but even so, you can still play it if you want. You know, a free mill eight whenever you want is obviously very good. But uh, just for this specific deck profile, I just didn't really want to... Uh, play with them <laughs> if that makes sense so yeah with that out of the way let's just jump straight into it now as always we're going to be starting off with the monster lineup so we're of course going to be playing three of the best card in the deck being three lights horn dragon link uh this card it's phenomenal it really does do so much for the deck because when you have a lights horn monster in your graveyard you're able to special summon this card from your hand then if this card is special summoned and it doesn't have to be by its own effect just special summoned in general you're able to foolish any lights horn card from your deck to the grave so spell monster trap whatever um and it's that though, as if that wasn't enough, when this card is sent to the graveyard, you can also search your deck for any dragon monster with 3k attack, 2600 defense, which basically translates to search punishment dragon or judgment dragon. Um, this card, it really just, it boosts the power, consistency, whatever, so, so, so much. And you definitely have to play three of it in modern Lightsworn decks. Uh, then to accompany or through Dragonlings, we're playing three Weiss Lightsworn Archfiend. Uh, so this card basically turns your bricks in the form of like Wolf, Felice, um, into non-bricks and it, in a lot of situations they end up being full combo because what Weiss does is you take those cards and well I guess I should be more specific you take any light sworn card from your hand you put it on top of your deck and then you special summon your Weiss and you get to mill the top two cards so you mill the card that you stacked and then you get to mill one additional card and after that you typically get to make either your Minerva Synchro or your Minerva Exceed which in turn will allow you to pretty much get full combo in most situations so yeah this card is pretty good uh, but it gets better because when this card is sent from deck to grave, you're able to target any Lightsworn monster in your graveyard except for Weiss and Special Summon it. So um, it just provides you with free fodder, basically, which is honestly pretty solid because this deck likes Special Summoning a lot. <laughs> uh, then for the final three of Lightsworn monster, we're playing three Wolf Lightsworn Beast. What can I say? Wolf is good again, so you gotta play three of it. Uh, you mill it, you Special Summon it. Really simple. Uh, then to go with our three Wolves, we're playing two Felice. Uh, so unlike Wolf, Felice, while being a tuner, it is a little bit worse just because it's not able to get its effect when it's sent by a spell or trap. Um, it has to be milled by a monster effect in order to special summon itself, which is the main reason why we're not playing three of it. But if you want to play three of it, by all means, go for it. All you really need to know is that this is literally just Wolf, but a tuner. <laughs> uh, then for the other two of Lightsworn Monster, we're playing two Raiden Hand of the Lightsworn. So this is a card that I still really enjoy. And I personally feel that this is honestly like the best normal summon. Uh, just because it'll pretty much always like bait something. And if not, you get two free cards to mill. Um, it's a level four tuner that you can normal summon unlike Felice. So it pairs really well with like the Bestial Engine for making very easy level 10 synchros. Uh, unfortunately, Baron Floor isn't around anymore. So uh, our really easy play of like normally summoning right in, milling two, hitting some kind of light or dark monster, push summon the Bestial, make Baron, and then pretty much have full protection for the rest of our plays is no longer possible but it's still a really solid card uh then for the final light sworn card we're playing one punishment dragon uh we're not playing judgment dragon just because it is kind of a brick uh let's face it but punishment dragon is still really solid especially because it's able to recycle all your resources it's a level eight monster uh so that means you can like you can exceed into like zombie vampire a lot more easily um and plus i just always want to have something that you can search off of dragonling it just feels like such a waste to have dragonling and then not have something to search off of it you know <laughs> so yeah uh one punishment dragon is all you ever need and then that's it for the light swarm portion and then for the bestials you're gonna play three lebellion this is pretty much like your main consistency piece just because it gives you access to every single one of your bestial cards and your branded regains which we are playing so uh, you know just gotta play three of it uh then for the one of's you play the one magnumut the one Druiswurm, the one Sirenir, and the one Baldrick. Just one of each name, you know. Uh, they're hard ones per turns to summon, so you don't really want to draw multiples. And you typically go through as many as possible uh, if you draw them, right? Like, you want to burn through them all just because uh, the boards that you make with this deck are honestly pretty crazy. Uh, and you don't have to use them all, but I just like using them all. <laughs> uh, but, you know, if you're going to be playing Lights when you might as well be greedy with it, right? <laughs> Uh, then that's it for the Bestials, and then just for like the generic good one ofs, you play your Wyvern Burster, your Collapse Serpent, uh, you got your Shufflers and Kaldo and Budora, uh, one Blackwing Zephyros, the Elite, 
one performance trick clown. These cards are okay. I just think they're really funny to use, so that's why I tossed them in. I know it's not the most competitive mindset, but it's okay. You don't have to be competitive with everything that you build. Um, but they're still pretty good, right? Trick Clown is a free body when it's milled, and then Zephyrus can bounce back like key resources. Uh, something cute that I like to do is um, I can, like, uh, for example, summon the Bistral Lubellion from my graveyard, then I can bounce it back with Zephyrus, and then I can activate Lubellion's effect from my hand to discard it to add another Bistral, and then you just keep com continuing to combo off like that. And there's just like a bunch of little cute plays that you can make next to cards like this. And then for the final monster, just one Star Leech Safer. Um, I don't really like putting too much of a focus on Starlight Safer, which is why I only play one. And I, ideally, you want to be normal summoning right in instead of summoning this, but it does have its uses where you can, for example, send itself and add Dragonling. Uh, but it really shines when it's in the graveyard because it's able to add back either your Lubellions or your Punishment Dragons, which in turn allows you to just continue comboing off. But with that, that's the monster lineup, and now we can finally move on to the spell and trap portion. Now, compared to the monster lineup, the spell and trap lineup is incredibly small, but that's perfectly fine because every card in here is really, like, high impact. So, as a result, we're playing three Charge of the Light Brigade. Really good card that's really simple to use. You just mill three for cost, and then you search for any Light Sworn monster. Really cool, really good, really simple. Uh, we don't play Solar Recharge Agility just because it's a little bit harder to use, as one, you need a Light Sworn monster in your hand to activate it, and two, uh, it's probably one of the worst feelings having your recharge get ash just because let's face it three cards is not enough to be able to win the game in a lot of situations with light sworn um and especially because it actually requires setup where you have to have a little light sworn monster in your hand to be able to use it uh three charges of the light brigade is more than enough to get the job done uh then for the only other three that we play in the deck being three triple tactics talent since the deck can't play hand traps i mean you can but it won't work well <laughs> um we decided to play three talent instead and whether you're going first or whether you're going second you're gonna find yourself being hit by some kind of monster effect so just being able to have talents in your hand to rip a card out of your opponent's hand draw to potentially steal a monster for game is just invaluable uh then for the two ofs just two branded regained i still really enjoy two branded regained uh, just because it allows you to open up with it a little bit more easily, which, you know, is always great in a deck that plays Bistuals or just banishes your Lights and Dark so consistently. Um, it pretty much allows you to recycle your resources by taking a banished Light or Dark and stacking it to the bottom and drawing a card. Then, um, this is also a really great protection for when you get hit by Nibiru because it allows you to bring back uh, your Bistuals or whatever. And it's, it's not even just Nibiru, right? Anytime your opponent decides to no more special summon once per turn, you're able to activate your branded Regan to bring back your Bistuals. Which uh, makes cards like Druus Worm, Ball Drake, Dissipator just all the more irritating to deal with. So, yeah, I really enjoy two branded regain, and that's it for the two ofs and the one ofs. We have the one Chaos Base. It searches a light or dark that can't be normal summoned. Uh, one Foolish Burial, and one Call by the Grave. Really straightforward, really simple, and that's it for the spells. And then for the traps, we just play the one Light Sworn Aegis. I prefer this over the Black Goat Laughs just because this card is able to stop cards such as Dark Roller No More, Forbidden Droplet, you know, a lot of really strong, really high impact cards, as opposed to the Black Goat Laughs, which only stops like one card, and I'm pretty sure it only stops monsters. Now, I could be wrong on that part, but you know, just having something like a Light Sworn Aegis to back up your Light Sworns and just protect your entire field in general is just invaluable. So, yeah, with that. That's the Spell and Trap lineup, and now we can finally move on to the Extra Deck. Now, the Extra Deck is pretty cool because there's so many different cards that you can try out. And like I said in the previous profiles, it was really hard trying to actually find the 15 that I wanted to play, just because I had so many options. But even so, uh, we're going to be starting off with the Exceed Monsters. You play the one Minerva, the Exalted Lightsworn, two level fours to mill three cards for every Lightsworn monster you mill, which we're, of course, going to be milling double Wolf Felice for full combo. Uh, you get a draw card. Uh, we don't care about the Destruction Effect just because by that point, the game's already over, basically. So, uh, yeah, all you need to know mill three draw every time you mill a light sworn so <laughs> pretty good uh, then for the other rank four is we play the one number 41 baguska the terribly tired tapir this is just to here for insurance against droll and shifter uh one abyss dweller so this deck always has like a bunch of fodder on field and that fodder is typically going to be level four so i figured why not throw in an abyss dweller just because so many decks currently revolve around the graveyard right um i think tempai is the only one that doesn't really care about the grave but even so uh you got decks like Ubel, uh Snake Eye, Tyrellman, you know, so many cool random decks that you will be playing at some point that just auto lose to this card. So I figured I might as well include it. Uh, then for one rank six, we're playing one Pilgrim Reaper. You play a bunch of Bistuals and you will open up multiples during some occasions. So, you know, this is literally Kelbic and Agito at home. All it takes is two level sixes and you get to mill five cards from both players' decks. Uh, we don't care about the attack point boost because we're typically going to be linking off with this, but 
Yeah, you, all you need to know, Kelpik and Agito at home. <laughs> and then to accompany our Kelpik and Agito at home, we're playing the one, the zombie vampire. It takes two level eights. You get to detach one, mill four from both players' decks, and then you get to special summon a monster that you milled. Uh, the other effect, much like Pilgrim Reaper, does not matter because we're typically going to link it off or just we're going for game that turn anyways. And then that's it for the Exceed monsters. And then for the links, uh, we're playing one Hieratic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres. There's a lot of dragons in this deck, so this card is actually very easy to make. And Seals is honestly just like a really ignorant card in a lot of situations, especially in a format where a normal summon is just can make or break a game pretty much instantly. Uh, then on top of that, it also floats into another dragon, which we play plenty of, right? You can send your or you can summon your dragonlings, your saferts, your bestials, whatever. Uh, this card, just really good. Uh, then for your other links, you play the one IP Masquerina, which basically is pretty much only a year to go into SP Little Knight, who, as you all have known if you've watched any of my profiles, is broken. <laughs> uh, then for your link fours, you play one Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess. And then for the other link four, I actually really like Saryuja Skaldra, just because uh, it allows you to draw four cards because you're always going to be using four materials. It's a dragon, which means that you can use it for your Heavenly Spheres. Uh, it helps you special summon monsters out of your hand. So if you have like a Bish Shield of Belion in your hand and you haven't summoned it to the field yet, you can go like Saryuja special summon it. And that applies to pretty much everything else, right? Raidens, uh, Trick Clowns, Zephros, Shufflers, whatever. Uh, this card, it just helps so much. Uh, then that's it for the links. And then for the Synchros, pretty straightforward as well. We play one Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend. Now this deck goes to time a lot just because it takes so long and your opponent's going to take so long on their turn. So, you know, might as well just have something that's like insurance and Scarlet pretty much fits the bill. But it has one added benefit as well, where it's a dark monster that's a dragon. So this is a potential target that you can tribute to Special Summon Lubelia from your graveyard. So just be aware of that. Uh, then you're, of course, playing the Minerva Synchro. Uh, it mills on summon, depending on how many Light Swarm monsters use this material. And then you basically get to have a free mill four by banishing four Light Swarm monsters from your grave which in turn allows you to summon your Punishment Dragon and, you know, things just spiral out of control pretty much the moment that this, is, that this card hits the field. Um, you have one Psy Frame Lord Omega. This card rips cards out of your opponent's hand. It has a lot of synergy with cards like Branded Regain by being able to put cards back. Um, it allows you to recycle key cards like your Shufflers and your Saferts during your opponent's turn. Uh, this card, it, it just does it all. It's really solid. And that's it for the level 8s. And then for the level 12s, uh, we're playing one Chenging. If you have Chaos Angel, obviously you play Chaos Angel over this, but I just wanted to provide you with like a budget option, and Chang'ing pretty much fits the bill, right? As it's a big boy that banishes, it's just solid. Uh, but the real star of the deck is Bishiel Dispater, who you are you can make pretty easily, and this is pretty much going to be your go-to monster that you make since Baron is banned, as it gets you banished monsters out of your banished zone by special summoning them. Um, it can negate or destroy monsters by putting back banished cards into the deck, depending on where it goes, obviously. Um, thanks to Branded Regained, even if this card gets like, hit by like Nibiru or whatever attributed, you can always bring it back. Uh, this card, it's just, it's a phenomenal card that's a very big nuisance for your opponent to deal with at all times in the game. So with that, that's the Light Swarm Bish Shield deck. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya!